An entitled Karen neighbor makes my life a living nightmare, constantly causing problems for me and my husband and making it so our life is just absolute chaos. So we decide to get some revenge and we end up buying the duplex that they live in and inform them that by the end of the month, they're going to have to move out. And I've never felt more satisfied in getting revenge in my life. Here's what happened. My husband and I are in our late 30s and we are child free and we've been saving up for almost a decade to move to a tropical paradise. About two years ago, we bit the bullet and moved to our dream location. Housing here is super expensive. We're talking like the prices of a house in Hawaii. So all we could afford was half of a duplex. It is beautiful and on the water with places for our boat. Unfortunately, the entitled Karen of this story, her boyfriend who I will call Billy Bob, as well as her three gremlins live in the other unit. Now, there was a period of time where we went here just for a week or two, but now we live here full time. The entire duplex was owned by an older gentleman who rented out both sides and the sides do not match at all. One side is a five bedroom, three bath and the other side of the duplex is a two bedroom, one bath and we bought the five bedroom. On our side of the property, we have 90% of the backyard. We have a gazebo and we have dockage. The other side has a small backyard, a patio and maybe 15 feet of dockage. The rental lease says the renters are entitled to their specific backyards but there were no fences or anything like that. So all the renters shared the entire backyard. After we bought the house, Karen immediately tried to throw her weight around that they expected to continue with that privilege. I told her if she asked politely, we could try to accommodate her. She thought this meant that she could use our backyard whenever she wanted. Well, one day my husband and I were enjoying some drinks outside when a delivery truck shows up to set up a giant blow up thing in our backyard. I asked this entitled Karen what in the world she thought she was doing and she said it was her kid's birthday. Then she had the gall to say it was a family and friends only event. So we had to stay inside of our house. Now, not wanting to be a total jerk and ruin some little girl's birthday party, I told the entitled Karen that after this, she had no access to our backyard, period. But this entitled Karen just shrugged and kept setting up for the party. Now, what happened next absolutely blew my mind. As during the party, a drunk adult wandered into our house, shocking all of us. Now, when this happened, I said to them, uh, the Karen's house is on the other side. This drunk guy said to me, oh, Karen said she owned the whole property and to use whichever bathroom was available. I then directed him to the Karen's bathroom and soon after she came storming into our house screaming about how dare we make her look bad in front of her friends and how selfish we are that we couldn't even spare one bathroom. She said we didn't deserve all this space with just us. I told Karen to get out of my house or I would be calling the police. She finally left and the party wrapped up shortly afterwards. After the party incident, we decided we need to clearly define the backyard and build a fence. While we were spending the money, we decided to update the patio, put in a fire pit and an outdoor kitchen. While the contractor was on site, this nosy Karen came in to try and investigate. Since the fence would be the last thing built, I was vague and just stuck to telling her about the patio update. You could see her face light up because of course, in her mind, what's ours is actually hers. When the worker started on the fence, this entitled Karen came out screaming for the work to stop. I went outside and I told the workers to keep working and I told this Karen to butt out. Of course, in true Karen fashion, she called the cops on us. What happened next was hilarity on my part after explaining to the cop that we were building a fence on our property and the landlord, of which the Karen was not, knew exactly what was going on. When the cop gave Karen a stern lecture, I thought her head was going to explode. She went back into her house and slammed the sliding door so hard, it sounded like something cracked. We got our fence and I thought that would be the end of it. But of course there was more we had to deal with. One day, Billy Bob, who's the boyfriend of this entitled Karen, entered the picture suddenly and he was as much of a terrible neighbor as this Karen. He would throw cigarette butts and empty beer cans over the fence, forever disrespecting his woman. I mean, I didn't know Paradise had trailer trash, but Billy Bob is the epitome of the stereotype. Billy Bob also has a boat, a 30-foot fishing boat to be precise. And of course, that side of the duplex only has 15 feet for dockage. Since we have so much dockage and only one boat, we ran out the other dockage spots as a month-to-month situation. And people come and go. So if we don't receive rent from them by the end of the month and the boat just suddenly disappears, we think nothing of it. We had a renter who tied up their boat on the property line, but Billy Bob wanted to park his boat and needed that space right now. So while we were out of town, Karen and Billy Bob posed as us, told the renters to be gone at the end of the month and 
then park Billy Bob's boat at the dock. I only found out about it weeks later because the renter left a nasty review on the rental site that we use. They said we were rude and went back on the verbal agreement to let them stay for three more months. I thought to myself, what is this all about? But after a phone call, I quickly put two and two together. So I called the cops who told Karen and Billy Bob that they needed to move their boat or they would be towed. Karen and Billy Bob started screaming the boat is fully on their property, even though it obviously wasn't on their property. They then changed their excuse to the fact that nobody can own water and that we were liars. Eventually, during all of this, Billy Bob punched a cop in the face and ended up going to jail. I honestly felt bad for the cops, so we took them all snacks the next day with an apology note for the neighbor's drama. I ended up winning my small claim suit against them for the lost rental income, but of course, I haven't seen a dime. I eventually convinced the dockage renters to come back and gave them a few months free as compensation. But with all things considered, this is right about when we decided to get some revenge. So with the collapsing market, we were trying to figure out what to do with our savings when a perfect opportunity opened up. The landlord who owned both properties was in desperate need of some cash and was tired of managing the property from 2,000 miles away. It also didn't help that this Karen was calling him weekly for every little thing. So this guy was willing to sell the property to us. His only stipulation was that we would let the poor single woman who has been renting from them for eight years finish out their lease. And that lease would end in July. Now, since we have the money, we were trying to reinvest. And because now we get control over our neighbors, we absolutely jumped on this opportunity. Since we didn't need a realtor or mortgage and an inspection had been done just a year ago for the old landlord to refinance, everything closed in just under two weeks. The entitled Karen, by the way, was aware of the changes in ownership. We registered the property under an LLC, but didn't know who until about eight days ago. I went over to the Karen side of the house and I knocked on the door. The Karen answered and said to me, what do you want, stupid? I just smiled, handed her our landlord information and sweetly reminded her that rent was due by Friday and that she could just hand me the check if that was easier. Now, I've always heard descriptions of people's faces turning white, but this was the first time I've actually seen it. I told this awful entitled Karen that we are honoring her lease until the end of July, but afterwards she had better make plans to move because we intend to remodel it before these next tenants move in. And I'll honestly be so glad when this entitled Karen and her stupid family are finally off of our new property. It is honestly awful having neighbors who act like this. Like these people move to a paradise. They move to their dream location and now they have to deal with some weird Karen and her kids. I mean, talk about overstaying your welcome and treating pretty much everybody else around you like garbage. Like there's no good excuse for the way she acted. I'm honestly blown away that the original landlord didn't try to evict them a long time ago. I mean, how could they possibly want somebody who has the cops called on them all the time, staying at their property and making a mess of things? So it really is a cool twist of fate that these people got to buy this place outright and basically give the eviction order for these stupid people. So hopefully these people move out sooner than later because you and your husband deserve some peace in your life because this entitled Karen has refused to allow you to have any. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Today, three older Karens made me cry at my cash register, and I'm so tired of being treated this way, and I seriously don't know what to do. So for a bit of context, I'm a cashier, and there were three older women who went into my lane. I greeted them as usual, and immediately they said that the chips they wanted were on sale. So I said to them, okay, let me go ahead and scan it so I can see what the sale is. But of course, some of the chips were not on sale. I informed them that the chips were not on sale, and that's when the yelling started. They yelled at me, saying the chips were definitely on sale, and that I'm not understanding them. I asked one of my co-workers to go check the sale for me, which of course, one brand of the chips that they wanted were in fact not on sale. They then started yelling at me to just take the chips off then, and I asked them, why are you having an attitude with me? I haven't done anything. Now, that may have not been the best thing for me to say, but I I was tired of being yelled at for over 30 minutes about some chips when I tried being cooperative and understanding. The older lady didn't really take that well and started yelling about how I was disrespectful and didn't know anything. She said I was being disrespectful because she can see it on my face and that I have an attitude because of how I look. They all three started yelling at me and I simply couldn't take it anymore and I started to cry. One of my co-workers rushed me into the break room so that they
they could deal with them and give me time to take a breather. An hour goes by and they are still arguing at the manager about some chips and one of the ladies actually tries to get into the break room that I was in. One of my co-workers who was there to comfort me told her that she can't be in here and that this is an employee break room. She ignored my co-worker and started telling me not to mind the older ladies and that she is old and she says stuff because she's old. Instead that I need to gain courage and be a man. She wasn't there to apologize. She was telling me that the older lady didn't do anything wrong and that I'm just sensitive. Another co-worker rushed her out and not long after the other lady tries to come in. She says she wants to give me a hug but my co-worker immediately escorts all three women out. This has seriously mortified me as I don't understand what was happening before everything went downhill. My manager did let me know that it's absolutely not my fault so I guess that is something to be happy about. Wow I can't believe the police were not called. These people literally went into the back break room and were still choosing to harass you. Like seriously that is messed up. Working customer service is already hard enough. It's a thankless job and you have to deal with crazy people like this on a daily basis. Like the original poster didn't do anything wrong. They were just trying to clarify a sale that they had in their store even though these three ladies were blatantly lying. So truly I'm so sorry this happened to the original poster. Hopefully nothing like this happens in the future because truly you did nothing wrong and you did not deserve it. This next one came from the Am I the Jerk podcast subreddit. Check the links in the description if you'd like to submit your own story. Am I the jerk for telling a guy off at my store after the way he talked to me and my co-workers? Here's what happened. 12 or 13 years ago, I used to push carts at a store that I will simply refer to as The Wall. And if you ever worked there, you will probably know why. Anyways, my job back then was helping put carts from the parking lot back into cart racks around the store and to help people get heavy items they purchased into their cars. One day around a holiday, I got called to help someone move a large grill into their pickup truck. The thing was seriously almost five and a half feet long and weighed about 180 pounds. The two of us and a security guard just managed to get the thing in the guy's truck bed and I offered to go climb in the bed and tie it down with anything he had available to do it with. And that's when things started to go bad. He asked me if the wall had any tie downs. I was new to the department back then, but I had been warned about this request. Basically, he was asking me if there was anything left from the Christmas trees that we sold in the garden, since we used to put the trees in nets to stop them from making a mess when they were being brought home. I told him that I'd been told by my coworker that those are usually gone by the end of January, and because it was April, it had simply been too long. I then asked him if he knew anyone who had something that they could use to help him tie the grill down. After he told me he didn't have anything in his truck and no one could come help him, I went through a few other standard options I could have suggested, and he turned all of them down. I finally only had one option to deploy, so I told him, since the security guard was there, that he could stand watch while we went into the store and picked up some bungee cords quickly. I even told him that we could cut through the line, and no sooner had I said that did he give me an awful stare and ask for my manager. I told him without hesitation that I could call my assistant manager, to which he agreed. The assistant manager, somehow even more politely than I had done it, went through all the same options as I did and ended up in the same place, and this guy absolutely lost it. He started cussing up a storm and said we were trying to rob him by making him pay even more for something than what the grill cost. On the other hand, I do understand that a grill that large and heavy, even back then, must have cost a ton of money, but the bungee cords only would have been another 5 or $10 to his purchase in total, and it wasn't worth getting this upset about. Finally, he decided that he had spent enough and wasn't willing to give the wall any more money, stating that he wanted a return. I told him that was fine, we could take the grill off his truck, go back into the store and return it, but he refused, saying that he wanted us to do the return without him going back in because we were going to rob him if he did, and he didn't dare step back inside the store. Well, the assistant manager told him that we could do that, but that it would take longer, to which he again agreed and said he'd park nearby if necessary. I called someone from our returns department because they had to take his basic information from him to process this return, and then I walked the grill back to returns on the other side of the store with my coworker, with the grill on the pallet we rolled it up to his car on and explained to her what was going on. By the time I got back, they had just managed to get him to go park somewhere. Keep in mind that by this time, he had been blocking traffic with his truck for over 15 minutes. He finally goes to park, and at first, I'm hesitant to go get carts out of the parking lot in case that somehow sets him off, but the security guard tells me to just stay close and I should be fine. I start two rows 
rows in front of that guy, then I do the row next to him, the row that he's on, and the one behind him. Keep in mind that each row takes about 5 to 10 minutes to do, and if he had just gone inside, he would have been done before I finished the second row. Without enough carts in the rows I just cleared, I realize I have to move two rows behind him, but I also have this sinking feeling that this will be the thing that sets him off because I know he's watching me, and he is set on making sure someone is paying attention to his problems. There's nothing for it though. I have to clean the row that needs the most attention. Sadly though, I was right, and as soon as I get into that row, he peels out of his parking space and stops in the road once again blocking traffic, but this time even more so. I called my assistant manager back as I ran to where he parked, and the security is heading back that way as well. We all get there at about the same time, and he's going off more than ever now. He's saying all these things and calling us this and that with the most colorful language this guy probably knows. And then there's me, the assistant manager, and security just trying to get this guy to calm down while he's literally turning red with anger. I swear, it's almost like he's going to try and fight one of us, he's so mad. Finally, he takes it a step too far and threatens to call the police on us, claiming once again that we were stealing from him, which sadly for him was something that we could retaliate against. Both myself and the assistant manager pulled out our phones and dialed 911. If he calls the cops, we are going to call the cops. Thankfully, the woman from Returns comes back with his money just after this happens, but she's afraid to get near him, so I take it to him, and I tell him to get away from me and my co-worker, since I have his plates and his name by this point. He takes the money and flips us all off until he drives away incredibly aggressive. I found out later that the guy was known in the store for being a borrower, meaning that he had bought the grill with the intent to use it over the holiday weekend just to show off to his friends what he had bought or something like that so that's why he wouldn't call anyone and why he didn't want to buy the bungee cords. He would likely have returned the grill the following Monday or Tuesday. He didn't want anyone to know what he was doing and he didn't actually intend to spend any money with the wall but obviously he wouldn't admit that and that's what caused the problems. He had apparently done this with TVs for big games though so that's how people knew about him. As far as I know after that incident he was banned from this store for life, and thankfully, as long as I worked there, he never tried to come back. I also never got in trouble for what I said, so I wanted to know, was I the jerk for losing my patience in that moment and talking to this guy in the way that I did? No, you are not the jerk. This guy clearly had an agenda, and you just so happened to be unfortunately blocking that agenda. Like, this guy's a complete weirdo, a complete creep through and through. There was literally no reason for this guy to act that way. He tried every angle in the book. He tried being super aggressive. He tried to threaten to return it to the store. He tried to claim you were trying to rob him. And then he tried to be like, oh, I'm calling the police. How dare you? Like this guy clearly was just being super sketchy. So no, your response was perfectly reasonable. This guy clearly escalated this in a way that was completely inappropriate. And if I was in your shoes, I probably would have reacted exactly the same way. A group of entitled kids in our neighborhood are ringing our doorbell at all hours of the night. And at this point, I'm so tired of it. I seriously don't know what to do. So for a bit of background, we are a family living in an apartment with those typical doorbells that make a deafening noise. They're so loud that you can hear the bells from other apartments ringing. Normally, we hear this sound and we expect it to be the mailman or someone from our home. However, last year, we began hearing children ringing our doorbell and running away. It was an isolated incident and I thought they wouldn't do it again, right? But to our surprise, the next day, they were there again, repeatedly ringing the doorbell. Bell. This eventually became a routine. The doorbell rang once, twice, three times in a row, until one day my brother-in-law, whom we will affectionately call Cricket, decided to confront these kids. He went out to the balcony and scolded them, and they didn't come back for a long period of time, almost a year. But yesterday, the kids rang the doorbell again. Imagine the scene. Seven kids ringing the doorbell and running like crazy. Now, I was already completely irritated, and I couldn't take it anymore. So I ran out on the balcony, and I screamed to these kids. But guess what? At 2 o'clock in the morning, the kids were back. Ring it! Come on, do it! They were encouraging each other. But this time, Cricket came out to the balcony and shouted at them to go ahead and ring that doorbell. And then when the kids heard that, they ran away in fear. Well, fast forward and today when we returned home, we saw the kids getting ready to ring the doorbell again. And guess what our reaction was? We taunted them. We said, come on, ring the doorbell again. We shouted this also in a playful tone. At that moment, my dad noticed an adult man, apparently responsible for them, and went to explain the situation. But this guy said something I honestly 
didn't expect. He said, why are you shouting at my kids? You should be shouting in prison. A lady who lives in the apartment below came to talk to us about why we were arguing. After a brief explanation, she said that the kids had rung the doorbell of her 80-year-old friend and even broke something of hers. Her friend got angry and talked to the kid's mother. The kids said that they were lying and the mother simply believed her children. The neighbor from the apartment below decided to intervene and said that she would talk to a friend of the kid's mother to try and resolve the situation. In the meantime, I'm thinking of filming the kids ringing the doorbell just to show to their mother. If she reacts negatively again, I won't hesitate to call the police and present all the evidence that we have. First off, you should have been recording them after the first incident. After you chased them off a year ago, why would you not get some kind of doorbell that also doubles as a camera? Like, those are all over the place, you can get them at any kind of store, and it would probably solve all of your problems. Like, that would have been the first thing I would have bought. Because these kids are clearly up to no good. They're bored and they want to bother people and that is not okay. And secondly, I also would call the police. Like the next time that happens, I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, ring the doorbell. I would say to them, the police are on their way. Like it really does seem like there's no negotiating with these people. The parents are clearly stupid and they're not going to do anything to stop this, but the cops absolutely would. So hopefully this all gets worked out because those kids are being super annoying and there's no reason for them to be ringing your doorbell at two o'clock in the morning. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.